Uh, hello everyone. Do, do you hear me? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, today I'm talking about a strange topic for like for Pearl. Pearl is uh, commonly associated with like camels and so on, but today we're talking about rabbits and uh, importance of rabbits in the modern not only Pearl ecosystem but the internet ecosystem. So. Um, Maybe anyone knows uh, what this is. It's a yeah, it's a rabbit, but it's a mm, special rabbit. Hairy. Mm, more special rabbit. Uh, yeah. It's uh, American Fuzzle Lop. This is a special breed of rabbit uh, that like changed how... I think it changed how internet works and will work in the you know, coming years. And what's so special about this rabbit? Well, it has no face. And mm, it's, it, it's not really uh, very high contrast, but this is a second face of this rabbit. Uh, there is a program called American Fuzzy Lock for that rabbit uh, that can crash almost everything. And it does this in, in a very special way. It doesn't know anything about your program. It just feeds it in correct inputs. And by feeding in, in correct inputs and measuring its response, it creates such inputs that, uh, that crash your program right away. And this is, for example, from a uh, uh, this whole process is called fuzzing, uh, and this is running Perl fuzzer uh, that has crashed it like almost ten, ten thousand times already. I'll talk about all, all those numbers uh, later. But uh, how does does this fuzzer actually go? You can uh, feed your programs a lot of incorrect inputs. And that will that will do nothing. Like if you feed like an opening bracket to a pearl, just says you okay. It's it's opening bracket. I can't do anything with that and access. Uh, but if you instrument your binary, specifically instrument your binary to measure all uh, subroutine calls, all uh, conditions, you can say. Uh, where the executions of your program goes. So, if you feed it with inputs that, ex that explore more and more and more of, pos of all possible paths in your program, uh, if there is a bug, and there is always a bug uh, hidden somewhere, it will sooner or later uh, find it. It just takes time, since uh, all possible paths in your program is to too large of a number to even imagine. Like, Perl binary takes like 10 megabytes of space, I think, or even more, maybe. And there are a lot of paths, and uh, they explode combinatorically, exponentially. So this fuzzer uh, has some heuristics that uh, direct it in a more interesting to us uh, ways. Uh, and this is like the main screen of uh, this fuzzer running. It has some interesting numbers. For example, how for how long is it running? Uh, how much crashes has it found? But it also has some internal interesting statistics. Uh, for example, that this this uh, is the number, is the amount of uh, internal memory consumed. Uh, this internal... Sorry? Have you the font size a little bit? Possible to get the font bigger? The screen. The screen? I think that's enough. <laughs> so, uh, this is a running instance of this father. The same fuzzer that you had uh, screened just a while ago. So 
it found some more some more results. Uh, that's what it's currently doing. Those are stages of what it can try to do in the source code. Uh, this is a current execution speed of like tested programs per second. And uh, this is internal memory consumption of this feather. Uh, it represents all possible paths as a bitmap, and this bitmap has a finite size. And uh, this, 47%, uh, is a bitmap sized for a tuned, ex tuned uh, file executable. I'll show you later how to tune it for Perl or for any other large program. But originally, if you just uh, download and run this further for Perl, it will show you figures like 97, 98%, and that's dangerous. That's bad since it shows you that uh, some paths may be inter interchanged with other paths that are not leading to crash. And uh, for fuzzing large uh, binaries, you'll have to increase this uh, bitmap size. So that's running. Yeah, file is running for 13 hours, but let's get back to the track. Uh, how did the. Uh, so, uh, we have this father and we have Perl. And we want to try to get some value from this, to crush our lovely pearl. Uh, how do we do this? Since this father uh, has to prepare the binary in advance, we have to compile pearl in a special way. Uh, we have to use a special version either of GCC or Slang. Uh, this is the compilation string for Slang. Since we will use other features from from Slam Suite later, but you can use FL GCC uh, also. So we can figure Perl, make it. We just we do not need uh, we do not need tasks. Uh, just uh, working test here. So that's the test prep target to save some time compiling Perl, and then we run it. What's interesting here? Uh, first, this is a very interesting library. It uh, hooks and replaces uh, some of the uh, libc functions of memory management. So now, Every time you ask for a memory, it gives you not the system memory, but a memory block managed by this library. And then if you reallocate it, or if you deallocate it, <coughs> and then try to access this block from your program, you'll get a card dump. Uh, as it protects any memory freed by it. So now, uh, if you have like errors, like accessing pointer or accessing data after pointer before pointer or after your pointer is freed, uh, those errors are caught. This can't be done in the father itself. It's a separate library. And uh, if you don't do this, some kind of errors may slip through. And then uh, we can provide a dictionary. Uh, what does this dictionary mean? Uh, this father knows nothing about your program. So it just replaces some bytes in the original text and so on and so on. But some bytes of your text are more meaningful than, than the other bytes. Like if you have require, it's much more meaningful than uh, require through I and so on. The larger those tokens are, the harder it is to generate them. So we give some help by providing lists of those tokens. Uh, what else is interesting here? Uh, 
we can provide uh, some some initial data, some starting program to work with. You uh, can provide nothing. You can provide empty file, and this will still work. Uh, the author of this pro of, uh, AFL of this program tried to generate a correct GIF file from from a, from an empty source and succeeded like in two days. But we do not want to wait two days for like a some Perl program, so we provide something. It can be like 100 bytes or 300 bytes of something valid. Just some uh, general cons constructs to to work with. Uh, then there are two limits, memory limit and time limit. You do not want your programs to run long, since long-running programs probably have cycles in them and they execute all the same instructions. They, that's not interesting to us. So we specify a, a lot of small timeout just to run our 30, 300 bytes of code or maybe kilobytes of code. And memory limit is also important, since if your program consumes a lot of memory, probably it also is running in cycles. Allocating lateral rights and so on, and that's also not interesting for us. And finally, uh, we are launching Perl, and uh, those two add signs show the father that uh, Perl wants uh, arguments as a file name. So AFL dumps what it wants to run into this file and run Perl uh, with this argument replaced uh, with the path to this file. And, and so it runs, and so it runs, uh, but it runs, as, as I've previously told, uh, with a uh, very, very high consumption of eternal bitmap. So to run it successfully, uh, we have to patch uh, our father. Uh, we'll have to patch show later, but for now it's just a father. So at first we increase uh, the bitmap size, and then we increase dictionary size, as Perl has a lot of tokens, and the default size for, for the dictionary is pretty low. And we'll let this run and run and run and run, and after two days, we return to our computer. And bang, everything is frozen. And uh, you are run out of inodes, and uh, your CPU is 100% con <coughs> consumed, though you've started only a single instance of the father. So, what has happened? Can anyone guess what has happened? Yeah. Did the father encounter a fork? Yeah. <laughs> it has not only encountered a fork, it also encountered uh, symlinks, unlinks, and and so on. A lot, a, a lot of different stuff. Since uh, Perl is a general purpose language, so it has to have all those utilities and tools in it. So, uh, but, but we want to run our father. So what do we do? Uh, we flash Perl, of course. What else can we do? And uh, now there is a very interesting thing about how Perl internally manages all those things, all those forks and loops and other functions. A lot of them are separate opcodes. An opcode is uh, the smallest possible thing a uh, Perl can execute. So we have to change those opcode handlers one by one. But if we just say to Perl, do nothing instead of this, do nothing instead of this, do nothing instead of this. Uh, we will very soon encounter a sick fault. But not just a red, but if you're on the same code on a real Perl cloud, just this code changes to nothing. You won't encounter a sick fault, since all those uh, codes use, use internal Perl stack to pass arguments to them and to pass return values from them. So while patching those of codes, we have to maintain the stack. And uh, sometimes this can be hard, since there are no information about 
This, of course, uses one argument and returns nothing. And this, of course, uses two arguments and returns also two arguments. Now, you have to read the source code of the Perl itself and sometimes even decipher what does it want. So, FERC is pretty straight, uh, pretty straightforward. It just returns one argument. Uh, the bit of the process it has spawned or zero or in the case of an error. But we didn't care. We just do nothing and return return 42. Why, why not to return 42? It's always good. Uh, and then the next of code, uh, backtick, uh, when, when you want to spawn process and like get some result from it, you, you use backticks. Uh, and it's a bit more tricky. Uh, you see, it depends uh, on the context. Does it want to return something or does it want to return something? And though uh, it has two opcodes with two handlers, and there are a lot of opcodes that can go wrong. Uh, I've separated them into uh, four large blocks. Actually, there are more like there's one more or uh, two more blocks, I'm not from here, but uh, I didn't get into like patching them. Uh, those blocks are creating new processes or spending current processes. Uh, this block is about executing new code. And this block is about uh, file system management. And this is about network or also about file system. Uh, there's also another block about sharp memory management. And, and I think that's all in general. And you see, uh, I've commented out uh, one of code here. It's not necessary to patch it, but I do this nevertheless since it produces a lot of false positives. And uh, I'll talk later about false positives. Uh, so, and you'll you see about how many unique headers are here. But a lot of. It, it's not obvious why you need to patch all of these out. Uh, you see, fork. Uh, we don't want to so run second process. Fork, I can understand. Almost all of the rest of them, I don't. <laughs> Dump. Dump just core dumps your current process yeah. at place. Exit. You do not want exit to mess with possible modifications of a source code later. You don't want to prematurely end the execution of your program. Uh, since the father do not know, is the first part of your program more important or the second part? If it uh, places exit in the middle and some useful modifications later, uh, you won't encounter them. So it's just more about uh, e uh, how to make less iterations for the same result. For, for example, uh, the sleep <coughs> has the same argument. You don't, don't want to waste your time <coughs> in your remote timeouts. Uh, uh, exact system require and do uh, the same thing. They try to load new code and you do not want to, to load new code. It takes some time and this is correct code. If you ever pass a correct argument to require a do, it will load the correct code from the disk. Not what you are trying to test and stress now. And if you pass where an encoded and current argument just wasted time. Uh, then it's about file system management. Uh, you do not want to mess with your file system. Oh, by the way, uh, never run any further outside of a virtual machine. So <laughs> I, I've watched everything here, but it's just mm, Maybe everything, maybe not. <laughs> so just just uh, to be safe, never run any further outside of a virtual machine. Okay. It can uh, starve your iNotes, remove your data, anything. 
theoretically, it can even escape this virtual machine, but uh, that's unlikely. But possible, still possible. Uh, then, like, here is a block that that a blocking is called, like, like uh, ex accept is not listed here, but it is there. Like, listen, you do not want to listen on a socket. Uh, the downside of this patching is that you won't test the internals of those original code handlers. Oh, but that's just a trade-off. So, what's else interesting in here? A a any other thing interesting? Why didn't you use save? Sorry? Save, there's a call module to patch this. Uh, I, 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 I'll talk about save PM later, a okay. bit later. Uh, it also modifies some of codes, but I want to have uh, a safe PM just forbids them. But I don't want to forbid them, I want to just skip them and, and throw away them and just go on. <laughs> so what we have what do we have next? Oh, okay, so now we have patched away all those uh, best of cards and uh, we restart our father. And what do we see? Uh, we see that it's running slow, like really slow, like 500 times in a second. For, for me, that's really slow. Uh, what can we do with this? Uh, the father has a very interesting alternative operation mode. In the first and basic operation mode, it uh, starts your program each time from, from scratch. Like, it uh, loads it from disk, uh, passes control to it, and says go, and then waits well when it finishes. But that's not optimal. Perl has a very high startup cost, so we want to minimize that. And uh, Father has uh, a very interesting alternative mode. It's called persistent mode. You tell Father, I've prepared uh, a specially crafted executable file for you. So uh, do, do, don't communicate with it in a normal way, communicate with it in a fast way. And to tell this to, to the Father, uh, you have to specify this constant in your code. And uh, since Perl has a very elaborate build system, you have to patch not, not like the source code, but like next to tells mini Perl. Yeah. That's the easiest way found to place it into the main section of a uh, Perl binary. And if you just place this constant, a lot of compilers will, try, will just throw it away. You are not using it, so why to keep it? So we have to do some tri tricky usage of it uh, to forbid compiler to throw it away. So, uh, what is, what's actually a uh, persistent mode? In persistent mode, uh, father, father feeds uh, you, or always feeds you, uh, throw as the dean and uh, fits your program, your co fits you code that uh, you'll need to execute to, to crash or to not crash. Uh, so what we do here is we read, uh, constantly read in a loop, limited by a number of iterations, so it won't grow in memory usage forever. And, and that's all. And this is much, much faster than the original uh, version. This is around 10 or 15 times faster than the original version. The downside here is that uh, this can leave something after itself. And uh, it will leave some variables, some maybe global set to a different state since you are uh, feed with, like, optimized input. But that's again a trade-off that we have to live with. If you want to fuzz it fast, uh, we have to use persistent mode. 
We can try to clean after ourselves, but that's certainly tricky with Pearl. So what, what's going next? Now, how do we change uh, the command line to run persistent mode? We just omit double add and runs in persistent mode. And now we get the speed that was uh, shown of, on, on live uh, screen, like 500 uh, iteration per second. But we just don't want to fuzzy old Perl. We also want to fuzzy uh, modern Perl. So, uh, we write a header that will be executed before any code that we run. It's, it's really a uh, fancy header, and then we try to run it. And it's abysmally slow. It's ten, ten times slower than the original version, but like probably without anything. So, what can we do with this? And probably can do anything in more than one way. So, we do this in another way. And uh, this is a special variable that's internal to Perl and to Perl versions uh, that says how to says different marks to parser and uh, the Perl core. And all those uh, experimental and features are just setting the same flux uh, we set here. So this is again fast. What, what are the problems when you find a pearl? Uh, a scalability counter, so st stability counter. This is the stability counter. It's, it tells uh, us that if you take uh, the same input and run it twice, how much paths do intersect? And for pearl it happens, it's not a high number. So this is about our reproduction of test cases. Uh, with low stability, it's very hard to reproduce. Yeah. Are you setting the hash rate? That's yeah. That's one of the ways how to mitigate this. This is running without a hash rate set. There are also other problems due to the fact that we are uh, running in persistent mode. Like if you print something, change print separator, and then print something again, it's different. Then uh, there are start timeouts for to run fast to timeout fast. You have to set it low, but uh, still you have a lot of uh, files in the input screen. So starting fast takes takes half a day, sometimes even more. Uh, then when you run a lot of fuzzers together. They have a non-linear scalability. So it's not about fuzzing only Perl, it's about fuzzing anything. Uh, you have to group fuzzers in the small small bags, like four fuzzers here, four fuzzers there, and then see those uh, groups manually. And uh, the last one is false positives. You see? Uh, here are a lot of lots, 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 lots of crashes, but uh, 95 to 99% of them are false positives. And you have to sort them out later. Or uh, match barrel even more. Uh, so what can go next? Oh, and that's the end of the main talk, how to prepare Perl for fast farming. And now some interesting findings. Uh, what do we have here? This is a regular expression, yeah? Uh, what will it do? What will it match? It, it won't match anything. Is it actually legal? Uh, it's legal. Uh, you're just trying to match an uh, eighth match group that doesn't exist. <clears throat> So, parallels can't can, can find it and crash. Uh, regular expressions in general are a separate language inside uh, the language Perl. And there are some other languages like 
uh, formats like pack and that's part of why I ban pack. I do not want to try it and try it and try it on trying to pack a zero pointer into something. Uh, and what else? And, and something else. Maybe we'll see it. Uh, here's another bit of Perl code. But what will it do? Any ideas? Is that a modulus? Or... What, what's the character of the thing? Uh, can you turn off the light, please, for a second? It's, it, is it better? It's no. better. Uh, yeah. bit better. Is it or what? Oh, not um, I think that uh, the syntax color is even confused by this code. <laughs> well, it crashes. Uh, this is... Uh, here, uh, the syntax parser also got confused by this example. Uh, this is a known operator, yeah? For everyone. So, what will this print? F2? No, E dash G. Oh. Yeah. And this was also found by Fuzzer. So, Fuzzer can, uh, cannot also find crashes. It can also find uh, memory leaks. It can find uh, things leading to those obscure examples. And this is wrong from, from, from the beginning of Perl 5. What happens here is uh, that this operator's parsing is, uh, is split into two phases. And uh, whenever the delimiter is a single column, it goes wrong. It goes completely wrong and doesn't parse uh, intervals inside it. So, not quite what you expected. And here we come to real, like, real bugs and all this stuff. This is innocently looking substring, yeah? What will happen if I run this? On an old Pro. Not on, not, not on the recently released Pro, it's fixed in. Oh, everything this is fixed in the uh, most recent release. Do you think it will crash? Who thinks it will crash? Might do. No. It's actually a uh, use after free. And uh, this is actually a class of bugs that can lead to uh, remote code execution. Uh, here it's really hard to trigger and um, it reads just a single byte if I remember correctly, but still Sometimes this can be exploited. And this is the real goal of Fuzzer to, to show you all those bugs that can lead to remote code execution. Everything else is just like a uh, bonus. And what happens here is uh, this is a non UTF 8 uh, string, and this is a UTF 8 string. And Substrap tries to upgrade uh, this one. To UTF-8 and uh, something goes wrong, by the way. And this, this is, for example, about forms. And sometimes uh, cases to reproduce some bugs look like can can be really long. And here we get we also get uh, buffer overrun, uh, also to UTF-8 UTF upgrade, I think. Yeah. Since, uh, since it doesn't account for some some urine bias uh, in the process. So, uh, that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, how, many, how much time do you have? Uh, so, no, no, no time now, unfortunately, but you can ask me questions after that.